Hello and welcome to another video. This is another limit problem and I know that the limit of this does not exist. Now how do I know? First of all, I just know. Because I can imagine what the graph of this is going to look like. From Algebra 2, I know that when I graph this, it will be impossible for you to tell what the function is going to be or look like when x equals 3 because it appears that on one side it's going up on the other side it's going down well that's from the graph but what happens is you never get the graph when you get a problem like this so how can you decide from the problem that the limit does not exist as x approaches 3 well that's why I made this video let's get into it quick sign to tell you that the limit of a function does not exist at a particular point is when you start seeing answers like oh infinity now when you see infinity in a problem especially if it's a rational function you it's either the answer is actually infinity or negative infinity or it does not exist and you have to investigate every time you get a denominator that's zero and usually that's the kind of problem you get so let's look at this you notice that the vertical asymptote of this function is 3 because that's the only number you cannot plug in here and that's the number they want you to plug in so you can't plug in 3 because when you plug in 3 the function is going to be not defined so there's going to be a vertical asymptote where the function is not behaving how it's supposed to behave so there's going to be a gap okay now let me call your attention to something that you probably should know by now see if you plot the graph of 1 over x it usually looks like this okay the graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x looks like this on the right and on the left it looks like this so you notice that at this point where x equals 0 from the left hand side the graph is going to negative infinity from the right hand side the graph is going to positive infinity so there's no limit because if I tell you what's gonna happen at zero you have to ask me are we talking about from the right or from the right or from the left when you ask that question and I say from both directions you go I am getting different answers then you know the limit at this point where x equals zero does not exist however look at this graph the graph of f of x equals 1 over x squared when you plot this graph it looks like this from the left it looks like that I mean from the right like that from the left it looks like this so if I ask you at this point where x equals 0 what would be the limit of this function well if you ask me is it from the left and I say look from both directions well from the left direction it's going up here positive infinity from the left direction it's going positive infinity so I know that the limit of this function as x approaches 0 which is this gap here is going to be positive infinity the limit for this one does not exist why because from the left it is different from from the right and let's say I didn't give you the graph how would you know what's going on how would you just look at this and say I know what the limit will be if the graph was not sketched well let me explain it to you using this now see what happens the first thing you do in a limit problem, every limit problem, as long as the, the, the point is finite, you're not going to infinity, as long as there's a number, try to plug in the number. So the step, first step, step one, okay, step one is plug in, plug in three. So if I plug in three, I will notice that this expression is going to become three plus two divided by three minus three, and that gives me five over zero remember that 5 divided by 0 will go to infinity your answer typically here is just gonna be so most students will jump to conclusion and say it's infinity because you're dividing by 0 well we know our problem has to do with infinity but we don't know if the infinity is gonna be positive in both directions or it's gonna be negative in both directions well actually this is obviously positive because you're dividing a positive number by zero so this positive infinity uh, but remember a limit only exists 
if, if you approach from both directions, you get the same behavior of the function. So now let's go to this problem and see, we know we're dealing with infinity now. We just want to conclude whether this is our answer or it does not exist. So it's either you get this or it does not exist or you get negative infinity or it does not exist. Well, you can't have both of them. So what you do is you go back to this denominator. We just want to see how this zero is going to behave if it was not zero. If it was close to zero, will it be a positive number or a negative number? That's all you have to do. So let's go back. Imagine a graph. Okay, this is one, sorry, negative one. This is one, this is two, and this is three. Okay, you just imagine it. I'm explaining this so you understand how to pick a does not exist answer whenever you take a limit. Okay, the fact that you got this does not mean you're correct. So now look at this three. We're approaching X is approaching three. Is it from the left or from the right? Well, those are the two options you have to consider. Let's assume that X is approaching three from the right. So it's coming from four. Okay, so X is approaching three from here. Well, just before getting to three, you'll be getting a number like 3.001, okay? Let's just take that number, 0.001. It could be a lot smaller, but 3.001, so watch. We're going to say x is now 3.001. So we're going to say 3.001 minus 3. What's the answer? The answer is 0.001. If you divide 5 by 0.001, well, you're going to get like 500, I believe. Yeah, or 5,000. If you get 5,000, well, maybe... 3.0000000000000000 Remember, we're talking about infinity here, so there's so many zeros, and this number is going to be so big that it's going to be infinitely large. But the most important thing is your answer is going to be a positive number because you're dividing 5 by a positive number because this is greater than this. No matter how many zeros you have here, this is greater than this, so you have a positive number. 0.0000000, it doesn't matter. You get positive infinity when you're approaching from the right. That would be your answer if the same thing happens when you're approaching from the left. So let's go back. You go to the number line. So this is approaching x approaches 3 from the right. So you do x approaches 3 from the left, from this side. If you pick a number, so this is going to be 2. If you pick a number between 2 and 3, approaching 3, it's going to be something like 2.99999. Let's say there are five nines, okay? When you subtract 3 from it, remember you just have to say, what's the difference? Well, if you subtract 3 from 2.9999, you're going to get negative, so you're, you're going to get 5 over negative 0.000001 or something like that. It doesn't matter how many zeros you have here. What you have found is that the answer you get is going to be negative. It's going to be a large number because there are many zeros, but it is negative. And because it's negative, what happens is from the left hand side, you're going to negative infinity. From the right hand side, you're going to positive infinity. That's the explanation for this, actually. Okay? So because you're going in opposite directions, you cannot say what the value of the function will be when it gets to zero because it depends on what direction you're coming from. Here, it doesn't matter what direction you're coming from. You get the same answer, positive infinity. Here you have one positive, one negative. And every time you do this, take a, a number slightly smaller than the target point and a number slightly greater than the target point and plug it into the lower function that gave you zero in the first place. If one is positive and the other is negative, your answer is going to be does not exist. Well, I've explained it. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I'm just going to clean this up and just do what I would do. What would I do? I just write these neatly. Okay, so let's see how you should present your work now that I've explained everything. So this is what you should do. Say by inspection, the function is undefined. at x equals 3 by inspection. So 
because it's undefined at x equals 3, you just need to take two limits, okay? Limits, you call them um, one-sided limits, okay? So taking, let me use the word, taking one-sided limits, okay? We're going to say the limit as x approaches 3 from the right for this function, x plus 2, over x minus 3 is going to be positive infinity. How do I know? You just do that little work that I did, okay? The limit as x approaches 3 from the right is going to be positive, and you also write the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of x plus 2 over x minus 3 is equal to negative infinity, okay? Since the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is not equal to the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. We say the limit as x approaches 3 for this function, x plus 2 over x minus 3, does not exist. you're good. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.